never thought my mother's sewing had anything to do with my work. And once I was working on a collage and turning a piece, and I have an image of my mother trying to make a little piece of cloth work to end up uh, being a, a child's jacket. So it's very closely tied to my work. Lila, what made you start the um, brand bag lunches, the discussions? How did that happen? There was a book. Uh, Louise Nevelson was one chapter of uh, and it had individual women artists. And this was a time when the Guerrilla Girls were pointing out that no women were in museums. And we discussed each of these artists who had made it to some extent. And it was about how they did it and the energy and just absolutely staying with it. And out of that discussion, uh, personal experiences. I think that ended up being uh, Marilyn Banner did a uh, nothing can stop you group after that. So it was a time when we needed to reassure each other. Do you remember what year that was? About? That was probably uh, 77, 78. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was a lot of energy down there, you know, starting in 74 little bit before, but it's a continuation of energy that brought these things out. Do you yes. remember that? Yes, that was quite a time when you think that zero women were in many museums. What? Was that you managed to get Joan Mondale to come to the uh, Washington Women's Arts Center? Well, I, I, that wasn't uh, something I did. Uh, Joan missed a uh, was a neighbor. Also, Mel Mister, her husband, was involved in the D.C. government. Uh, but she was the brand new uh, vice president's wife coming to town. And, you know, what's the role she's going to play? And she came to the Washington Art Center because she was a ceramicist and she wanted to meet other ceramicists and see if she could share a kiln with other ceramicists. <laughs> then she very kindly wrote a wonderful letter. And uh, our first uh, grant proposal to the National Endowment included that letter, and we got our first grant. Was that the only time you used the letter? That's a valuable thing. No, I think we used to say, Throw in the Mondale <laughs> How was it that you started the Blum Lectures? What was your thinking in terms of that particular uh, group? Well, here, here again, it was Zita Dresma who noticed that there's an Eden C. Blum Foundation in New York City that gave grants to women's organizations. And she uh, wrote the grant. And that was another place where we threw in the Joan Mondale letter. And we got this modest grant, but what we were able to do with it was amazing because we had, a, a, I ran the first lecture series and we were able to get four speakers, Endosaka Shanke, who uh, was a real coup since her Colored Girls was on Broadway. We also got Lila Katzen, Lois Jones, Pierre Norell, and Nancy Holt. So I got phone calls asking how I got Endosaki Shanke, and I think she wanted to come to D.C., and she wanted to respond to a women's organization. That was a wonderful time, wasn't it? Yes. When people really wanted to support women's organizations and the Washington Women's Art our center provided a place where we could right. have the benefit of having them come, but they could also do what they wanted to do. Well, it's interesting because poets are, are have the same problem as women. They have never they have such a struggle, and so the poetry group, uniquely run by Barbara Berman, had Ethelbert Miller, who was like the 
DC poet. And so he found a home here too, because homes for poets, male or female, were so difficult to find. Lila, when you think back to those days at the Washington Women's Arts Center on Q Street, did it change you? What's the most important thing you got out of that time? It was very important. I had a community of artists to talk to. I made friends that I've had ever since. Uh, I, I had the physics community through my husband and this gave me an art community. So if somebody came in and said, what's the best thing that happened that you still do for yourself today? Well, uh, being an artist is who I am and the encouragement to keep doing it, to keep reassuring myself that I'm still a functioning person. I think without that community of artists and opportunities and the connections that came from that, uh, that wouldn't have happened. I would have been the artist alone in the studio. <laughs>